Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alaikum. You're watching News Room. I'm your host, Ruma Khalid Bhatt. Today is the 15th of June 2023, and we've got lots to discuss with you. So, without further ado, these are the topics of discussion during the course of the show. We'll begin with the updates as far as Cyclone Bipper Joy is concerned. Now, as far as the latest reports go, the uh, Bipper, uh, Cyclone has uh, recurved northeastwards and away from Karachi, but it is expected that it might be hitting the coastal areas anytime tonight after 8 p.m. The uh, Minister for Climate Change, Shahi Rahman Sahiba, has called on and citizens to refrain from disaster tourism. She has also insisted on evacuations in coastal areas uh, are not optional in fact they have they are mandatory and need to be done plan b is also ready if morias are affected this is what the ndma chief has said the military says that more than 82 percent of the vulnerable people have been shifted to secure locations as far as the estimates go around 82,000 people have been now shifted to safe locations uh, also our prime minister has directed to utilize all the resources to protect people in the wake of the cyclone. We are uh, discussing the latest updates and of course uh, what is are the uh, eventualities that could occur in case the cyclone does hit the, the coastal areas of Pakistan and what will be the after effects direct and indirect on Balochistan <coughs> and on Sindh province. Our second segment ladies and gentlemen concerns the relationship between Azerbaijan and Pakistan. This in context of the official visit of our uh, Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif Saab to Azerbaijan where he has had a lot of uh, very uh, important discussions and meetings whether it be with the president of Azerbaijan or with the other important leadership a lot of uh, important uh, uh, cooperation agreements uh, uh, have been discussed and have been agreed on to whether it be the import of uh, LNG cargo of one cargo ship that will be coming to Pakistan every month whether it be it be the cooperation between the PSO and Sokor uh, their uh, two uh, companies to uh, look at and mitigate the energy vows of Pakistan and other uh, different segments where uh, the agreements have been uh, finalized between the two countries. This visit has been an extremely important one. We'll be discussing that in our second segment. Then we'll be talking about uh, Murtaza Wahab of Pakistan's People's Party, who has been elected the mayor of Karachi. He has defeated a candidate from Jamaat Islami, Hafiz Naimur Rahman. Uh, Mr. Wahab has said that he will be working for the betterment of uh, the city in his maiden address after becoming the mayor of Karachi. This is going to be our third story. Our fourth story, ladies and gentlemen, concerns uh, 78 migrants that have drowned early on Wednesday and more are feared missing after an overloaded boat capsized and sank off Greece, which is one of Europe's deadliest shipwrecks this year and among those are a lot of Asians and uh, as per the reports some Pakistanis as well and then finally ladies and gentlemen we'll be talking about uh, 17 music publishers who have uh, who hold the rights to music from artists that include Drake, Taylor Swift and Adele who have filed a joint lawsuit in a federal court in Tennessee suing Twitter over what they call massive copyright infringement. This is going to be our last story. Let's begin with our first, and that concerns the updates as far as Cyclone Bipper Joy <coughs> is concerned. Now, the cyclone is to hit the coastal areas of Pakistan anytime uh, later this evening after 8 p.m. Of course, we'll be there to update you as in one uh, anything happens. Uh, but of course, a lot of precautions are being taken by the government. Our uh, forces, our Navy, our armed forces are also there to help the people in need. So is the NDMA, so is the provincial government. And a lot of people have been evacuated. More in the following report. The very severe cyclonic storm Biperjoy is expected to hit coastal communities of Pakistan. The cyclone Biperjoy is likely keep tracking northeastward and will landfall between Kiti Bandar and Indian Gujarat coast this evening as a very severe cyclonic storm with packing winds of 111 kilometers per hour. The intensity of the cyclone will increase amid nearing the shore. Biperjoy developed into a cyclone in the early morning hours of 6th June, and the radius of the present cyclone appears to be greater than the previous one of 1999. Evacuations continue in Sindh and vulnerable areas as cyclone Biperjoy barrels towards Pakistan's coastal belt. Federal Minister for Climate Change Sheri Rahman apprised that the storm would not make direct landfall in Karachi, but tidal waves rainfall and dust storms are expected in the city. The areas declared vulnerable are the same that were impacted during the 2022 floods and the cyclone may halt relief and rebuilding of work underway. 
People need to take PDMA Synth and PDMA Balochistan advisories seriously for the coastal areas. The government is trying to evacuate masses to safer places, and it is the only remedy to cope with the cyclones in the world. Unusually warm waters helped fuel Biperjoy's rapid intensification twice in its lifetime, which indicate dangerous dynamics of climate change and its impact on Pakistan. Munir Ahmed, environmentalist, joins us in the studio to discuss more on Bipar Joy. Munir Sahib, thank you very much to have joined us. Uh, Munir Sahib, uh, uh, when you look at Bipar Joy, it reminds you of the 1999 cyclone 2A that mm. had hit the same, almost the same areas that uh, Bipar Joy is about to hit. A lot of people are reminded of those times because at that time there were a lot of casualties as well. Uh, how uh, are the preparations this time in order to avert any such strategy? Uh, this time, I think uh, we are more uh, prepared and well in time, uh, we, uh, um, you know, warn the people. Uh, rather, uh, we put a uh, lot of efforts to evacuate the people. And uh, this time, at least there will be no uh, human uh, casualty as uh, uh, we inshallah. foresee, inshallah. Uh, but uh, there will be a loss of infrastructure and others and uh, also like it would have uh, a bit uh, impact on uh, uh, our uh, Karachi city. That mm -hmm. is the mega city, but uh, that but will not be. But it is kind of diverted a little bit from Karachi, and but the areas that are most affected yes. will be the coastal yes, areas. Yes, it is uh, more slanted towards now uh, to uh, Kati Bandar, mm -hmm. and uh, certainly uh, th that sure would have uh, more impact. But uh, certainly the uh, winds would uh, uh, cause, and the um, uh, maybe like uh, there will be heavy rain mm -hmm. uh, over there, and they, they, you know, these two things can cause a uh, little bit more. Uh, uh, sort of uh, a disastrous situation, maybe, mm. but uh, mostly uh, it is the uh, Katy Bandar, and uh, of course, uh, like uh, most part of uh, uh, the India as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, Gujarat, uh, uh, Gujarat, mm -hmm. yeah, and uh, um, about like 150,000 people have been vacated from uh, these. Uh, but uh, uh, previously, uh, we uh, don't have, uh, we don't had bits basically. Uh, the kind of uh, warning systems that we have mm. now in place and uh, the satellites imagery that we get at the moment. And uh, uh, as you know, like uh, we have been discussing this uh, 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 cyclone mm. for last uh, about t t two day, uh, mm. days and we are uh, watching each and every move of the storm. Mm. And uh, because of the latest technology. Yeah, that we because have. of the latest technology. Mm. And uh, uh, maybe last night uh, it was more uh, towards uh, 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 India, but uh, an, uh, the recent report, just one hour uh, back, it is reported that it has slanted towards uh, more uh, little, uh, Katy Bandar. Oh, let so let, let's talk a little bit about yeah. the coastal areas, about yeah. uh, the warning that the PDMA has <coughs> issued uh, yeah. includes uh, Matiari, Badin, Tando uh. Muhammad Khan, Tando Layar, uh, Thatta, Sajawal, Shaheed Ben Azirabad, Sanghar, Mirpur Khas, mm. Parkar, and Umarkot. Mm. And the DCs of those areas have been tasked to take specific precautions in order to avert any uh, untoward incident. What are the untoward incidents that we could have in case a cyclone does uh, strike these areas? Uh, certainly it's a large area and uh, definitely uh, the uh, deputy commissioners and the district management and city management have been taking such uh, kind of measures to uh, vacate. But uh, uh, they, they like two kind of uh, um, more uh, disaster that we are uh, uh, expecting one is like uh, that uh, uh, the uh, uh, loss of infrastructure basically and mm -hmm. the second uh, it can also impact uh, most of the lives as well as mm -hmm. like uh, uh, the, there is uh, you know uh, the uh, waves they are like 30 40 feet high and you know uh, they can um, you know uh, come towards uh, the most uh, part of the areas and uh, the heavy rains and uh, uh, though uh, the uh, wind has slowed down to 125 uh, 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 kilometer now, mm. but uh, I believe uh, uh, it, if it reduced more, then there will be a little uh, less damage because the wind also can uh, blow certain uh, infrastructures and uh, also cause uh, uh, damage to uh, the uh, even the livestock and uh, the uh, other, uh, uh, you know, 
uh, whatever uh, the infrastructure is there. All right. But Munir sir, yeah. what, what uh, precautions need to be taken by the vulnerable communities, uh, including those who have been shifted to safer places and those that are present, for example, in Karachi, where there could be certain repercussions directly mm. or indirectly mm. because of the cyclone which hits. And of course, the cyclone Bipajoy, the name, a lot of people are asking, what does Bipajoy mean? It means disaster in the Bengali language. Yeah. Uh, uh, how much of a disaster is it going to cause in your point of view? Uh, definitely, it will uh, uh, cause us a lot of, uh, uh, you know, as I said, uh, loss of infrastructure because uh, we, uh, the, it, these are uh, the areas of uh, fisheries. Mm. Certainly, the, there may be uh, the boats of uh, the fishermen and the trawlers, and uh, they are also tourist uh, places as well. Mm. So, the infrastructure uh, that we have for uh, uh, the tourism mm. and the hospitality sector is uh, uh, definitely would have uh, a loss as well. And uh, so, uh, there are uh, many in infrastructure of the government that uh, to watch uh, the uh, shoreside areas and uh, they, uh, uh, they would be impacted. And uh, uh, I believe like uh, it would be a huge uh, loss uh, to uh, uh, the people and to infrastructure and to the government installations. And uh, once we have to rebuild uh, the uh, hospitality and those infrastructure over there, certainly it would cost a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And uh, and you know, uh, the uh, Pakistan government is starved for money and uh, certainly it would uh, uh, have to go to appeal again. Mm -hmm. Though uh, the uh, effect is of uh, the last monsoon still are waiting for uh, uh, the rehabilitation and reconstruction. Mm -hmm. uh, but and but this will be Nations another. Has, but United Nations, of course, uh, Munir Sahib has assured that it will be there for Pakistan to help Pakistan in this hour of need. Yes, yes, if they there said. Is some they kind said, of and they, to they did. But uh, still, uh, uh, it is uh, whatever the aid we got uh, mm. in the last uh, mm. uh, monsoon, uh, disaster after the uh, was disaster, not what had that been was pledged. not uh, mm. uh, basically. Uh, mm. We uh, w w we could not have uh, the uh, ample or the sufficient pledges uh, mm. from. All right. uh, no, we uh, had the sufficient pledges, but those pledges did not translate into enough action in the form of money. Mm. Now, let's talk about the predictions, Munir Saab. Uh, weather alert says a storm surge of 3 to 4 meters was mm. expected at Kiti Bandar, uh, where the cyclone is, of course, uh, apparently it will make landfall. Then uh, it says that uh, 300 millimeters of rainfall uh, mm. might uh, happen in Thatta, in Sajawal, Mirpur, Khas, Badin, Umar mm. Kod, and Tharparkar between today and the 17th hmm. of, of June. Uh, what precautionary measures, in your point of view, should the vulnerable population take? Uh, certainly, uh, like 300 millimeter rain hmm. means at the large area, hmm. it can create, and uh, we uh, don't have uh, such kind of uh, drainage. Hmm. And uh, the, also the housing that uh, structures that we have uh, uh, in our uh, these areas, uh, they are not uh, very like resilient to such kind of storms. And like when it uh, uh, enters into like two or three kilometer of uh, area, hmm. certainly it will, uh, uh, you know, uh, sweep everything over there. So it would be, uh, I believe, uh, a massive disaster in our uh, recent history. Maybe uh, a much more impact than uh, uh, we had uh, uh, last monsoon. Hmm. Uh, but uh, uh, d definitely um, now we have to take care of. Uh, uh, like uh, we should be uh, prepared to uh, provide uh, emergency services uh, to those like who are affected uh, by could the be affected storm, well. could be affected by the uh, uh, storm, hmm. uh, the uh, rainstorm basically. Hmm. All right. So, so I think uh, our Pakistan uh, government has uh, asked and they have uh, all the agencies are well prepared hmm. and they have uh, already extended uh, 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 precautionary measures to uh, say all the areas and mm. they have also uh, you know uh, alerted all the emergency services as well so I believe uh, 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 there will be enough to uh, meet the uh, impact of the disaster. I hope so. I really hope so. Now, the storm is still unstable and unpredictable as far as yeah. the NDMA Chairman Lieutenant General Imam Haider is concerned. 
also in your point of view how would you categorize cyclone Bipajo? is this an unusual uh, tropical cyclone because as per climate scientists the seas have its temperatures in the arabian sea were 31 to 32 degrees centigrade in early june which was two to four degrees above the climatological means and a rule of thumb as far as scientists are concerned especially oceanologists they say that ocean temperatures need to be above 27 degrees centigrade to sustain a tropical cyclone uh, so what would you term this cyclone as an unusual cyclone uh, an unstable cyclone an unpredictable cyclone uh, as far as uh, all the information that if we an, uh, analyze uh, the information coming uh, uh, in the last two three days this is uh, really unpredictable at the moment hmm. even at the moment uh, so um, it had never uh, you know such kind of uh, uh, cyclones that uh, we had and usually uh, they could predict a day before or two days uh, before mm. that uh, which part of uh, the uh, shore it would hit. But uh, uh, as I said, like uh, one hour before, uh, it is uh, predict predicted that it has uh, more slanted towards uh, mm. uh, our shores. Mm. So uh, still we don't uh, have... No, how, how it's going to impact, how, what areas yeah, it is exact exactly. eventually going to impact. And what could be the uh, intensity of it. Mm. And mm. Munisa, so, yes, that is true. But Munisa, we've discussed in many shows with you in the past climate hmm. change, how Pakistan is extremely vulnerable to climate change. Uh, the ocean temperatures, as I discussed in the last question, uh, are uh, slightly above normal as well, due to yeah. which this cyclone is lasting longer, as in slower to arrive uh, to its ultimate destination. Is it because of climate change? Is climate change somehow directly or indirectly responsible for cyclones such as these? Uh, certainly directly responsible. Climate change is the only uh, victim because uh, uh, at the moment uh, we are not taking care of, uh, you know, uh, not taking enough measures to uh, reduce uh, global warming. Hmm. And uh, there should have been more cut on the carbons. But uh, unfortunately still the um, states of uh, the rich of the world they are not uh, paying uh, heed to it. Mm. So uh, the vulnerable communities, the vulnerable uh, countries have to suffer from it. Mm. And uh, cyclones comes because of uh, the warming of the oceans. And it increases uh, the uh, temperature of the oceans, as you, mm. uh, you just mentioned. So uh, we need to cut down the uh, global warming and it, because uh, uh, there is no other option. Secondly, uh, we also need to uh, avoid, right, stop fiddling with the uh, marine ecology and the deep sea interventions that we are, uh, you know, mm. uh, that, that we, we are Also doing. keep our oceans clean. Yeah, but we also need to uh, oceans clean. And, uh, you know, the, the um, uh, you know, under the sea, uh, digging out uh, oil and gas and such kind of interventions they have and uh, also like the kind of... Uh, um, uh, energy interventions we are doing over there, they are also one a part of it. And secondly, uh, the uh, shores are becoming uh, more uh, uh, environment unfriendly as well. And uh, we are not uh, taking care of the marine e ecologies. Mm. That mm. is uh, the one of uh, the uh, major uh, problems mm. of uh, 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 you know of these uh, cyclones. Mm. So if until and unless we don't address our carbon issues, like uh, though we have uh, a slogan of uh, zero carbon Less and climate carbon. impact, and you know, but uh, 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 we're not uh, uh, doing much uh, for the planet. All right. So we need to do more in your point of view. This said, uh, uh, all, uh, our neighboring country, India, is also going to be lashed by it. In fact, there have been multiple deaths that have been reported so far, the, including off the coast of Mumbai in India. 75,000 people have been evacuated in India's state of Gujarat alone. Is India going to be impacted more than Pakistan? Uh, I believe so, because uh, um, uh, they also are uh, much vulnerable than us. And uh, it uh, and and they also have uh, more weaker infrastructure over there and they're very congested and uh, 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 infrastructure over there and uh, 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 god forbid but uh, mm. they uh, they they may be impacted more than pakistan uh, but uh, uh, they are uh, used to have such kind of uh, um, uh, disasters and uh, they are much uh, prepared i believe mm. and uh, but uh, un unfortunately, you can evacuate uh, the uh, 
uh, people uh, from mm. uh, those areas. But uh, what about the infrastructure, uh, what is over there? Mm. So uh, the there larger... Could be fi- there, there could be a lot more damage in India, yeah, your point yeah. of view, than uh, we would expect in Pakistan. Last question, uh, Munir Saab. A 2021 study that was conducted by NASA says that cyclones over the four last decades have uh, lasted longer, have mm. become more frequent. And cyclones in the Arabian Sea are relatively rare, but we're seeing one that is happening yeah, right now. Okay. Uh, they are more becoming more frequent because of the rising sea temperatures we are seeing paper joy right now we don't know what effect it's going to have or impact it's going to have in the coming days but how in your point of view should pakistan prepare itself for upcoming cyclones uh, i think uh, uh, we need to have uh, 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 at least uh, uh, some studies of uh, uh, you know such kind of uh, like on uh, cyclones mm. um, and uh, then uh, we can prepare our uh, shores like uh, our uh, uh, these parts uh, uh, more uh, you know uh, we can develop uh, a resilient infrastructure over there all right we can uh, also help our communities become more resilient to such kind of and mm. uh, they should uh, know like if such kind of things happen mm. how they n- will prevent themselves mm. Mm. and their infrastructures over there. So same is the case with the infrastructure that uh, the public sector has over there. So uh, if uh, they are more resilient, as we are now building, uh, we have uh, uh, earthquake resistant building codes Mm. Mm. because we believe that uh, uh, earthquakes are very frequent and uh, the construction should be more earthquake resistant. So uh, then, you know, uh, in the future uh, planning, uh, we need to have a more cyclone uh, resistant and, and resilient uh, 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 infrastructures over there. And also we need to have more research on uh, such kind of uh, uh, cyclones and uh, with uh, in collaboration with, as you mentioned, NASA, and they can be a, mm. a good uh, partner mm-hmm. in, in it. And uh, of course, um, the other countries, uh, those, because we need to understand uh, uh, the uh, the the uh, uh, future behavior of our oceans. Mm. So and that is very important. Uh, and we need to be updated and prepared for yeah. any eventuality that that could happen. And the one thing uh, uh, also, Omar, we need to have uh, that is uh, our uh, early warning systems. Mm. We need to like like this time we yeah, know uh, beforehand yeah, when it's we, going we to have where it, how it is changing patterns. Yeah. That is because of the latest scientific technology yeah. and all the satellite systems that are also happening, especially mm. from Thar and from Bangkok, yeah. where uh, we are getting a lot of help. Thank you so very much, Munir Ahmed Sab, ladies and gentlemen. There are a lot of uh, telephone numbers, a lot of uh, official websites and social media pages of the PDMA, of the NDMA that are f- uh, that uh, cite to the numbers where you can call in case of any emergency, uh, that also cite the precautionary measures that you need to take before the cyclone, during the cyclone, and after the cyclone hits uh, the susceptible areas. So kindly follow those instructions and be very careful. Don't venture too much out of uh, your houses in these days. And also kindly do not uh, resort to uh, adventurism by taking videos or for your social media platforms by going uh, to uh, the cyclone hit areas. Uh, be very careful. We need to be careful in order to avert tragedy. Let's come to our second segment, ladies and gentlemen, and that concerns uh, the ties between Azerbaijan and Pakistan. Uh, strong ties. Pakistan was the second country in the world that uh, uh, officially recognized uh, Azerbaijan after its independence. And since then, the relationship between both the countries has become stronger. And now with the visit of our Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif Saab to Azerbaijan, those ties have further been cemented more in the following report. Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif and President of Azerbaijan Ilham Aliyev exchanged views on bilateral trade, investment, cooperation in IT and energy sector during their meeting at Zugulba Presidential Palace. Upon his arrival at the palace, Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif was accorded a warm welcome by Azri President Ilham Aliyev. Contingent of Armed Forces of Azerbaijan presented Guard of Honor to Shehbaz Sharif. The Premier is on a two-day official visit to Baku on the invitation of the Azerbaijan President. Both leaders will hold talks on diverse topics of mutual interest. Earlier, Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif paid a visit to Memorial of Martyrs. The Premier laid floral wreath and paid tributes to the heroes of Azerbaijan. Members of delegation accompanied Shehbaz Sharif. Prime Minister also visited the mausoleum of Azerbaijan's national leader Haider Aliyev and paid his respects. Shehbaz Sharif termed the visit to the mausoleum an honor. 
Now the relationship between Azerbaijan and Pakistan, ladies and gentlemen, is time tested. It has only strengthened with time. If uh, we remember in 2017, there was a defense agreement uh, during on the sidelines of the ECO summit that was signed uh, between Azerbaijan and Pakistan under leadership of the uh, then uh, Prime Minister, uh, Mr. Nawaz Sharif. Now, at the, on the invitation of President Ilham Aliyev, Prime Minister Shahbaz Sharif arrived on a two-day official visit uh, to Azerbaijan. He's met with uh, the Azerbaijani president. A lot of agreements have been signed. Uh, we have good news as far as the LNG is concerned that we'll be having one cargo ship every month arriving from Azerbaijan. Uh, this has been made official uh, for the LNG. Also, Sokur and PSO will be working together uh, to uh, alleviate Pakistan's energy wars and many other agreements in the energy, trade, aviation, agriculture, transport and defense sectors. Uh, to talk more about the relationship between Azerbaijan and Pakistan, the relationship that exists between these two countries and how this visit is going to further strengthen them, we've been joined by Khalid Temur Akram Saab. He's executive director of the PRCCSF. Uh, he's here with us in the studios. Khalid Saab, it's always a pleasure to talk to Thank you, you especially when it comes to Central Asian countries because <laughs> uh, uh, you visit them a lot, you understand them much more than persons, laymen like myself do. Uh, this two-day visit to Azerbaijan, how important is it? Uh, I would uh, consider it very historic uh, because of many reasons. Number one, Pakistan has always been supporting Azerbaijan since uh, ever since Azerbaijan got independence. Second uh, country to have, uh, you know, yes, uh, and it. also uh, we are probably the only country in the world which has not recognized Armenia mm. uh, because of the Karabakh issue. Because the Karabakh issue was very similar to. Kashmir issue mm. and in 1991-92 uh, when uh, uh, Azerbaijan they got independence Pakistan decided not to recognize Armenia because uh, Armenia had forcefully occupied uh, the Azerbaijani land uh, of Karabakh and in 2020 we saw uh, Azerbaijani troops uh, uh, they got back that area and uh, the kind of diplomatic support which Pakistan has been providing Azerbaijan since last 30-32 uh, years, uh, the people of Azerbaijan truly acknowledges uh, that, uh, that support and uh, since 2020, uh, I have personally seen that the flags of Turkey and Pakistan are flown wherever in Azerbaijan, the Azerbaijani flags uh, are uh, being uh, put. And uh, I had the honor to meet uh, the president of Azerbaijan uh, uh, almost three times uh, in last uh, uh, two years. And I have always found him full of praise for Pakistan. And uh, maybe uh, over here, not many of our viewers know that uh, uh, very recently, a few months back, uh, president of Azerbaijan told uh, his uh, uh, government officials that uh, uh, finish off all the uh, duties and customs and levies on the import of rice from Pakistan. Mm. And when I met him in uh, uh, last in November uh, 2022, and I asked him uh, for uh, his this action, and he said that I told my people that if you have to eat rice, eat Pakistani rice, and there will be no uh, taxes on Pakistani rice. So he gave this a very good gesture. Also, we have seen in the last couple of months, uh, lots of visit from our energy uh, ministry uh, people to Azerbaijan and Azerbaijan had uh, offered uh, cheap gas to Pakistan, LNG and LPG. And, and that has been finalized because that the cabinet has, been has approved it. Yes, uh, mm -hmm. the Prime Minister uh, and uh, in, during the bilateral talks it has been finalized and just yesterday we saw the ECC um, uh, under Mr. Isaac Dar, he, mm -hmm. uh, they uh, formally um, uh, gave an uh, go ahead uh, to mm. soccer the uh, Azerbaijani energy company to send LNG and LPG to Pakistan. Also, we have now direct flights uh, from Lahore two and Karachi, two mm. flights mm. Uh, to Baku, mm. and a uh, lot of tourism is increasing between Pakistan and Azerbaijan. And now people uh, prefer going to Baku, uh, uh, who were previously going to Europe and other mm. countries. Mm. Now, uh, Baku has. Uh, become a major tourist attraction for Pakistan. Shahbaz Sharif Saab has said that there's a total unanimity on views when it comes to multilateral issues between Azerbaijan and Pakistan. What are the factors that have built on this trust, this sincerity between the two countries? Many things. Uh, as I said that the uh, current president's father, uh, Mr. Heather Aliyev, who was uh, the first president of Azerbaijan, he had uh, a lot of uh, respect for Pakistan and the same respect 
is carried by his son, the current uh, mm. president of Azerbaijan. Mm. And as I have told you that in last 30, 32 years, Pakistan has been providing unconditional support to Azerbaijan on the Karabakh issue. Mm. Uh, whether it is UN or OIC or uh, NAM or any other mm. international platform, Pakistan had always been standing by Azerbaijan on uh, this uh, Karabakh issue. And Azerbaijan has always stood by Pakistan on the Kashmir on issue. On Kashmir issue, yes. Mm. Uh, this I was going on this, that uh, just two years back, uh, 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 after uh, uh, this uh, abolition of Article uh, 370, uh, 370 mm. I wrote an article about it, and uh, I had sent it to my uh, uh, friends in Azerbaijan for publishing it. And I was uh, pleased to see that they did not ask me any single second question and next morning it was published in Azerbaijani newspapers. Mm -hmm. So they gave lot of weightage to Pakistan, they have got lot of love for Pakistan, although we are far apart but uh, our ideas are same, uh, uh, the Azerbaijani people they love Pakistani food, they uh, uh, one of the major industries in Azerbaijan is the carpet industry and uh, there's a lot of carpets now coming uh, via Iran uh, uh, from Azerbaijan and normally uh, we see and uh, uh, the Iranian carpets over here. So basically those carpets they first go from Azerbaijan to uh, Iran and from Iran they come to Pakistan. Uh, uh, Azerbaijan is one country uh, which has abolished uh, visas for Pakistanis. Mm. Uh, we can, you can get a Mm, online visa uh, just on internet just put in your passport number uh, and get an online visa and go to Azerbaijan room around over there so you will find lot of love for Pakistan mm. so this love is not only built in one or two years of course it is uh, whatever uh, Pakistan has been doing for Azerbaijan in last 30 35 years so it has accumulated into uh, a broader picture and I must say uh, in last couple of months our Prime Minister Shabazz Sharif he has been going a lot in this region. He has been meeting with Azerbaijani president at various international platforms and I think it is the right time for this visit because uh, Pakistan is facing a lot of energy crisis and Azerbaijan has played a role of a good friend and they have uh, come up with uh, this cheap LNG uh, and uh, LPG offered to Pakistan and uh, hopefully uh, most of this uh, will come by road also. All right. All right. Uh, well, we're in conversation with Khalid Saab. We'll be back after a short break. Stay tuned. Welcome back. Uh, just a few moments back, there were some MOUs that were signed between the Azerbaijani and the Pakistani side. Uh, Naveed Kamar Saab, our Minister for Commerce, was there as well. And we were just talking about uh, the energy uh, issues that Pakistan has, energy vows that Pakistan has, and how Azerbaijan is there uh, to help Pakistan in this hour of need. Uh, we also have been uh, telling you that uh, uh, it has been confirmed that Azerbaijan will be sending one LNG cargo ship every month to Pakistan to help Pakistan under the current situation and also LPG uh, will be coming in cargo ships uh, to Pakistan as well. Khalid Temur Akram Saab, uh, Pakistan's energy vows and Azerbaijani help, how much is that going to help Pakistan? That's very important and very timely because uh, I would say that it's a big success of this comment also because we have been negotiating this deal since almost uh, like uh, since last 10 years mm. because the uh, first time I heard about this deal being done was uh, probably in 2015 or 16. All right. But uh, there were negotiations and there were a lot of uh, red tapeism and uh, how the uh, cargo will come mm. and uh, about the rates and everything. But uh, now... And these are also good rate on discounted yes, rates. Yes, yes. Now we have seen that Azerbaijani president, uh, he had even, uh, he has now put his foot down with his own company mm. and told them that no matter what happens, we have to give energy to Pakistan as soon as possible because as it is always said that a friend in need is a friend indeed. Hmm. So they have really proven it uh, and they have uh, taken Pakistan out of uh, uh, this uh, immediate crisis. Hmm. And every month we are going to see a ship of LNG and LPG coming to Pakistan and uh, uh, on a very, very discounted price. So hmm. that's going to help Pakistan, uh, especially uh, for overcoming our gas shortages hmm. uh, and uh, especially our industry also. All right. Uh, Shabazz Sharif Saab said that uh, uh, 
Pakistan and Azerbaijan both are going to cooperate in different sectors. He talked about the aviation that we've talked about, Azar here, that will be flying two flights every uh, week to Lahore and Karachi. Then there's the energy sector that we've just talked, trade. You've talked about how rice is going to be uh, tax-free uh, to be uh, imported, uh, to be exported, exported to Azerbaijan. To Azerbaijan. Uh, we've got uh, transport and defense sectors. Let's talk a little bit about the defense relationship that exists between uh, the two uh, countries. I remember way back in 2017, there was a major defense agreement signed between the then Prime Minister of Pakistan, Nawaz Sharif, and uh, uh, Azerbaijani side on the sidelines of the ECO summit. Uh, how important is the strategic relationship that both the countries enjoy, and how can both the countries take it further in order to uh, further improve the security situation in the region? Actually, this is a very interesting question because after 2020 in Azerbaijan, the situation is now changed because Azerbaijan's uh, success in the Karabakh war, after that Azerbaijan had another strategic agreement uh, between uh, with Pakistan and with Turkey. And uh, now uh, this alliance is known as Iron Brothers Alliance in uh, international arena. And Pakistan, Iran, uh, Pakistan, Turkey, and Azerbaijan, they have conducted joint uh, uh, trilateral military exercises in Azerbaijan and in Pakistan also and in Turkey also. The relationship between Azerbaijan and Pakistan uh, on the defense side is on the increase. Azerbaijan uh, is buying uh, 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 weapons from Pakistan. As you know that uh, we have a very big uh, uh, small weapon industries in VA and uh, uh, we have a uh, defense export promotion organization which is selling these weapons all over the world. So Azerbaijan is also a big market for us and they are buying uh, these small arms from us and in addition to that uh, uh, their pilots have been coming to Pakistan for training. Uh, uh, their uh, uh, cadets, uh, uh, the officer cadets uh, are in Pakistan Military Academy. Uh, their uh, students are coming for the engineering uh, uh, education in Pakistan and for a lot of other defense cooperation is happening. I think that for the regional peace and for uh, the overall security of the region, this is very, very important. But on the other hand, I must tell the audience over here that in last couple of months, India has been playing quite a negative role uh, because India has agreed to provide uh, uh, long range uh, surface to air missiles and long range surface to surface missile to Armenia, which they were not supposed to uh, provide to Armenia. And Azerbaijan has, uh, um, uh, in front of the European Union and in the United Nations, they have uh, uh, told them that India is trying to destabilize the region. On the other hand, Pakistan's role in the regional stability is now very well known and Pakistan's effort for the regional stability uh, and for the regional trade uh, are now recognized not only by all the Central Asian countries but also uh, by the South, uh, South Caucasus countries and we have recently seen the Belarus uh, foreign minister coming to Pakistan and uh, now our prime minister today since uh, yesterday he's in Azerbaijan. So I think that Pakistan has emerged as uh, a regional leader and Pakistan is playing a very, very responsible role and our foreign policy is not only very balanced but uh, our foreign policy now is towards, uh, is focusing on this region which was previously neglected. All right. Also, I'd like to, uh, you know, uh, you've been to Baku. I haven't been. I hope I get the opportunity to go there. A lot of people talk about the neatness, uh, the beauty of Baku as a city. Now, our Prime Minister has requested the Azerbaijani President to lend their expertise in horticulture as well as waste management for cities such as Islamabad. That's an interesting prospect and maybe it could be used for Karachi. But what do you feel, what are the other avenues apart from maybe uh, uh, cooperating in horticulture and waste management? What are the other avenues that have not yet been tapped into? Yes, uh, let me first talk about Baku and uh, Baku is one of the most cleanest cities. Mm. Uh, if you go to Baku, you would not find even a single piece of rubber anywhere. They have an extremely well managed waste management system and uh, uh, Baku is growing and uh, Baku is like uh, Lahore, you know, if you, uh, you are roaming around in the interior Lahore uh, and Gulberg area, so Baku is like All that. Right. So it's very clean city. And uh, Baku also has a very interesting place, Multan Sarai. There is a very historical place uh, known as Multan Sarai because in the old Silk Route time, uh, the caravans used to go from this part of the world and their final destination used to be Baku. All right. And over there, they're still in the old city. You have uh, 
Multan Sarai. So tourism is one where mm. we can cooperate. Uh, the service industry, uh, Azerbaijan has an extremely good hotel industry. We can get benefit out of them. Uh, we can uh, know from their uh, the, uh, uh, their experience. Uh, they have uh, uh, very good. Uh, they have declared Susha as the cultural capital uh, for the region. Uh, because uh, Susha uh, was previously uh, the cultural capital and now after liberation they have again declared it as the cultural capital of the world. So yes, this uh, service industry including waste management, including uh, Baku also has an extremely well managed water system. All right. That also needs to be learned from them. Hmm. But that that's interesting because you know there are so many avenues and when we look at an example such as that, such as that of Azerbaijan, I think we can learn and uh, you know appreciate what Azerbaijan is offering to the world and I hope inshallah uh, very soon Pakistan will also be able to offer that especially in the tourism industry because Pakistan has so many avenues that it could use as far as uh, tourism is concerned. Now Prime Minister has uh, said uh, that uh, our ties are so strong since ages these do not reflect its intensity through daily investment exchange of visits and other important areas of cooperation. Uh, do you feel it is uh, high time to give momentum to more visits to a more aggressive uh, policy towards Azerbaijan or do you feel we are going in the right path? Uh, I think uh, right now we are going in the right path uh, but this needs momentum. Uh, we have to send more business delegations over there. We have to uh, encourage our businessmen to go and invest in Azerbaijan. Azerbaijan is a small country. Mm. They have a limited population. Um, uh, they have over uh, 10 million population population is very less but mm. it doesn't mean that we can't invest over there mm. uh, Azerbaijan has a very big tourism industry mm. uh, and in this complete region if there are uh, more uh, tourists if any country is getting more tourists that is Azerbaijan and Baku because they have a very big skiing resort at uh, Gabala uh, then uh, they have an extremely well managed uh, uh, tourism sector so we can take a lot of lessons from them and we can help them and also we can use their expertise in Pakistan in attracting tourism that is one thing which I uh, would say that we should learn from them that how they are managing their historical buildings how they are managing their tourism because there are lots of opportunities for tourists over there uh, they, they have a very good transport system Baku has a very good public transport system uh, their buses are very good and they're very tourist friendly and even if you are a tourist you sit in a bus you don't have a ticket so they would facilitate you uh, so all these things uh, have made Azerbaijan and Baku at the center stage of the world and in last couple of years we have seen that even the tourists from Dubai they are going to Baku you will be surprised to know that every day there are uh, more than 10 flights of uh, the Emirates and Fly Dubai airline going from Dubai mm. to Baku and mm. the if you go to Dubai and ask them they say that uh, Baku has become uh, one of the major competitors of Dubai because instead of uh, going to Dubai now anybody going to Dubai would like to visit Of course uh, there is this uh, uh, the, so many things that Azerbaijan has to offer and that is what is the incentive for people to go and visit it and I hope that Pakistan will also inshallah uh, very soon come to uh, the level where a lot of people will also be diverting their uh, flights towards Pakistan and go to the north of Pakistan yes, and exactly. to the different areas in the Punjab and the Sindh uh, uh, provinces. Thank you so very much Khalid Taimur Akram Saab Executive Director PRCCSF to have joined us in the studio to talk about the relationship between Azerbaijan and Pakistan and nobody better than yourself could <laughs> have you talked much. about that. Thank you. Thank you so much sir. Let's come to our last three stories very quickly. The first is about uh, the Pakistan People's Party candidate barrister Murtaza Bahab who has been elected as the mayor of Karachi Metropolitan Corporation. He secured 173 votes while Jamaat Islam's candidate Hafiz Naimur Rahman secured 160. The election was held at the Arts Council of Pakistan in which 100 73 members as I told you voted in favor of Mr. Murtaza Wahab. He has been elected as the first ever mayor of Karachi from the Pakistan People's Party. So congratulations to his party as well. According to unofficial results, 333 elected members of the key MC participated in the voting process for the election of the mayor and deputy mayor of the port city. So congratulations Mr. Wahab and I hope you'll do a lot of good for Karachi. Let's come to our next story and that concerns Greece and another boat tragedy that has occurred there in which around 78 people have lost their lives. 
there, there, there is a, a discrepancy as far as the number of uh, people on the boat uh, was concerned. Some say it is, the United Nations says it is around 400, 450, but a lot of other agencies say the people on the boat were around 750. Uh, these 78 people have died. Many more are feared missing after this fishing boat carrying refugees and migrants capsized. It sank off the southern coast of East, one of the worst such disasters that has happened this year. The Greek Coast Guard said the vessel sank in international waters. Rescuers have saved uh, 104 passengers, which is great, including Egyptians, Syrians, Pakistanis, Afghans and Palestinians and have recovered 78 bodies. This could be one of the worst ever recorded uh, sinking uh, on the feared central Mediterranean migration route, which is also the world's deadliest. Our last story, ladies and gentlemen, concerns Twitter. Major music publications have filed a federal lawsuit accusing Twitter of failing to stop rampant copyright infringement on the platform. Nothing new there. The National Music Publishers Association, the N MPA and its members have argued that the social media company Twitter should pay as much as 150,000 US dollars per work that has been infringed. Uh, they have said, and I quote, Twitter stands alone as the largest social media platform that has completely refused to license millions of songs that are on its uh, service. Twitter knows fully well that the music is leaked, launched and streamed by billions of people every day on its platform. Let's see how all of this happens under Elon Musk's uh, leadership. Will Twitter respond? Will Twitter pay uh, the music uh, producers what, uh, it is, what is due to them? Well, we'll be updating you on that as well. With that, we come to an end of today's newsroom. We'll see you inshallah tomorrow with news stories and segments that pertain to you and Pakistan. In the meantime, a prayer goes for all the people in Balochistan and in Sindh uh, for Cyclone Biparjoy. I hope uh, that uh, less and less people are uh, affected by it. Allah Hafiz.